Here's some easy language for the indicator I'm about to show you. It plots the close over the range. Very simple range divided by close. We're applying it to the day session of the evening S&P. And the second plot was yesterday's value, 0.259%. And you see that here, the yellow is the range over the close. Has not been at these levels for a very long time, February, I guess. And you see the trading below those levels back before Christmas of last year. So we were at holiday, uh, day before Christmas type ranges yesterday, 8.75 points. That can often be uh, a peak and that can often be a turning point when the market goes too far one way in either price direction or volatility it can signal a um, it can signal a turning point it can also it's very tricky though because it can also stay that way for a long time and so our strategies continue to take the long side but we are prepared to take short trades and we are prepared for either direction i become more and more aware of the potential for a reversal when the markets go to these extremes that's pretty extreme um, to see that level 0 0.0025 at these VIX levels. I don't think that's ever happened. I'll have to go back once again and see what the lowest range as a percentage of closing value when the VIX is above 20. We've seen these ranges, 0.025% ranges when VIX is way down here uh, in the 12 level. And even back here, the lowest VIX reading ever was recorded in 2017 you see at the bottom here you see VIX is in the 8 and 9 handle back here um, 8 8.84 right there on July the 28th and the um, you see the 0.25% so you see that 0.25% in at July of 2017 and it stays in that at that level uh, for a while through the end of the year and so we have a different set of circumstances, a different set of fundamentals lining up. We know what happened at the beginning of 2018, a lot of volatility, and then again at the end of 2018. We're coming into an election, so there's not, um, we don't, we're not looking at a smooth uh, news flow this fall. We ha still have the pandemic, and we have the presidential election, and the news flow will be different. So I don't know that uh, it would be very surprising to see the market remains so calm throughout the election and throughout the rest of this year. But these levels are uh, levels where the market doesn't usually go much lower. You don't usually see the market go that much lower. Uh, you do see VIX much lower, so that could be interesting if VIX continues to go lower and these ranges shrink to 0.1% or below 0.1%. Um, based on Fed stimulus. So we've talk, talked about the concept that Fed stimulus uh, tends to start looking like a fixed, a fixed income investment where it just goes up a little bit each day. And that's what we're taking a look at. Uh, we don't think it, you know, it can't last forever as long as we have a free market environment. We still have a free market environment. Even with Fed intervention, uh, it's not completely um, controlled by the Fed. So Anything can happen here, and we the, the main thing to watch for is to become more and more aware of the potential for an increase in volatility and the potential to take short trades while still trading the long side because the trend is up, and that's exactly what our strategies are doing. Let's take a look at the market internals as well. So the market internals are really weak. The S&P went up this morning, strong surge into the open towards 3,400, made new highs in the S&P futures and cash. And the NASDAQ did the same thing, strong surge uh, right at the open, right here. And it is currently about three minutes before 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're about 30 minutes into it. What's interesting, though, is take a look at this. Uh, the advanced decline line has kind of tanked, minus 422. The ticks have kind of tanked. And so there's some divergence between the broader market in these indexes and when I'm drawn on the screen the price is freeze so let's unfreeze that and you see where the current prices are the market is just uh, these narrow indexes in the NASDAQ and the S&P are just uh, just have so many buyers coming in every single day driving prices up way beyond overbought as we know markets can stay overbought for a long time but these are some of the things I'm looking at uh, just because the market internals are down and this thing is way overbought doesn't mean it can't go higher so we are actually on the long side right now with the awareness that 
the market could roll over and we have strategies that are ready to go short as well uh, when the market rolls over.